Hello and welcome to episode 142 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch. And on today's short but sweet episode, we're talking about the latest update to Adobe Lightroom Classic. We're talking about version 14.2. Now, this is not a monster release uh, by any means. This is not the traditional fall release or also spring release that we usually see from Adobe. That's where we see most of the features added but this is an important enough release to talk about it in a video. Now, some of the features that Adobe has brought forward are really hard to demonstrate in this video. Number one is they've added another round of lenses that Adobe recognizes. And of course, I don't have any of those lenses to demonstrate. You could go through the database and see if you've purchased a new lens or have an older lens and Adobe has incorporated it into lens corrections and those kinds of things inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. The other thing that's hard to demonstrate is the performance issues. They've made the brush drawing when you're doing a development uh, inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. They have made this easier to do brushes or seeing the crop tool and those kinds of previews. And it seems faster, but that's really hard to demonstrate. Uh, and of course, it's just one of those things that Adobe is improving and things are getting better. So, And there are some nice improvements in the development module and also in the library module when hopping from one particular folder to the next. So that's a very nice feature and it does feel a little bit faster, but again, very hard to demonstrate. So instead of talking about things I can't demonstrate easily to you, let's talk about the two things that Adobe has done that I can demonstrate to you that I actually think are more important than people are giving it credit for. Now, the first is the catalog backup, and I have done a whole video on the importance of backing up a catalog. I'm gonna include that link in the description down below. Uh, there's just been some minor modifications on the interface of backing up a catalog. Why you back up the frequency of it, all that kind of stuff remains true. But if you go to Lightroom Classic on the menu bar, if you're on a Mac or edit, if you're on Windows, you will then come down to catalog settings. Now, the new feature here is immediate in the window because they have a backup tab. So you can now directly deal with all of the backup information. It's no longer in the general section. And the entire top section is pretty much exactly what it's been like for years, where the catalog is going to be stored, how often you're going to backup said catalog. And then it does give you some additional information now. It tells you the number of backups that you currently have stored in that location, the last time you did do a backup, and also the total size that all of your backups are taking up on your hard drive. This is good to know because some Sometimes people lose count or track of their backups. And this is a great feature because people lose track of how much data or space their backups occupy on their hard drive. And I'm sure this is why Adobe included this in this latest update. Now, as far as the, how often you should back up, I suggest every time Lightroom exits as I have it already set up here. But as far as the number of backups, that's really up to you. Keep in mind that sometimes when a catalog gets corrupted, you might not realize it until a second or third time of backing up. So I usually keep the last 30 days of backups or say eight backups current on my hard drive. Uh, I kind of go between those two kind of numbers there. But the numbers that you want to keep is totally your business. One thing to point out, it does give me a warning down here at the bottom saying that my backups are in the same location as my catalog. I back up everything. So my backups and my catalog being together, it's not that big of a deal, but it's nice that Adobe separates it. And because it's easier to find now in this update, it's probably not as big of a deal as I make it in the backup video. So that's kind of a nice feature. Now, your most recent backup is listed at the top and your least recent backup is down at the bottom. And they do automatically name the backups with date and time based upon when you did the backup. So that's the easiest way to find it. But just know that the most current backups at the top and the least current is down at the bottom. You have three ways to interact with the backup. You have the ability to remove it from the list, which really doesn't make any sense because now you have a backup that's not being tracked by Adobe. And that can lead to data rot, you know, that space on your hard drive that's unaccounted for and just sits there and occupies space and you forget about it. So I wouldn't use remove, but the delete button I see being used a lot because you just go through and delete the catalogs as you go uh, or as they are no longer necessary. And again, you're probably going to go from bottom to top. The show button will actually take you to your operating system and show you where that particular catalog or backup of that catalog is stored. There are always zip files, double click on them, opens up a zip file, you have a new folder with the catalog inside of it, and then go take that folder wherever you need to. The only downside that I could see of this window is if for some reason you can't get into your catalog because it is corrupted, 
it might be tough to get into catalog settings. So you still wanna make note of where you're storing your catalogs just in case you have to do this manually and the process of unzipping the file is still the same. You would just have to go find that zip file. But this is a nice feature. It helps those of us who are not maybe keeping as good of track of our backups as we should. It has that feature there for us. And this is a very powerful, very convenient feature. Thank you Adobe for including it. The second and maybe even more important or cool feature of Adobe Lightroom Classic 14.2 is found in tethering. So I've already started the tethering. And if you're not too familiar on that, I have a video on Lightroom tethering. I will include that link in the description down below. But if you're not familiar with it or you just kind of need to get to this window, you're gonna start the process by going to tethered capture. None of that has changed. The major update here and also the major downer here is that Adobe has improved the live view version. So if you hit live on this little bar here, you will get a live view from your camera. So this is like a video stream from your camera. And it's great, especially when you're positioning things or placing things. But a problem with live view for years in uh, Lightroom Classic and actually most tethering programs has been an ability to do auto focusing in the program itself. So traditionally, if I've wanted to autofocus, I would have to walk away from this microphone, go over to the camera, hit the autofocus button, move the points around. They have changed that at least in theory, because my problem, and I've struggled with this for now two days, I've borrowed cameras now to see if it's a new camera issue. I can't get it to work, but I can at least demonstrate it. In theory, when you hit the AF button here, you would turn on autofocus control and Lightroom Classic would have that control. Then down at the bottom, you have a menu, which of course is not appearing at the moment, that would show you your different autofocus modes. So it's weird in the recording, and maybe it's just the streaming thing here, but this little drop down menu or this little menu right here would show you all of your different focusing modes. So this would show you, say, wide AF or all the points. It would show you zone, it would show you medium, small, so forth and so on. And right now it's set in medium, and you can see that I can move the, the box around, but I can't click in the box and get it to autofocus at this time. Now, I have gone through every troubleshooting thing that I could find. One thing that I have noticed is that I cannot trigger the camera as quickly through Lightroom as I did in a previous update. So if I hit my shutter button here and we're talking, I, I still haven't heard the camera click uh, and it seems to take forever. Now what's interesting, and I have to now wait for the image to appear, if I go to the shutter button and hit the shutter button, it works just fine. So tethering still works, especially if you're doing it from the camera, but there seems to at least be in the Sony system, some sort of glitch going on here. I'm using an A7 Mark IV. I've also tried this out on A7R Mark IVs and it's not working. And you could see how long it took for that image to appear. So that just popped up. So this, something is wrong and I've checked all of my settings and it could be something weird that I have missed, but maybe it's a little bit of a glitch between Sony and Adobe wouldn't be the first time. But if you're shooting Canon or Nikon, you have the ability to do this as well. The list of cameras that are available for this feature is limited and I will include a link to Adobe's page on that. So if you have a camera that's maybe five or six years old, you're probably not gonna be able to do this. But if you have a newer camera, in theory, you should be able to hit that live view button, see the screen, click the little drop down or pop up window in the bottom left hand corner, change your focus modes, and then be able to focus wherever you want to, which is fantastic, especially for those of us doing product work and we're trying to double check focus or shift for one scene to another. This is a fantastic feature. And in theory, it looks great. Hopefully soon I will figure it out. Well, that concludes our video. Hopefully that was short and sweet enough for you. Please like, please subscribe, please share this video with anybody who's maybe also upgraded to Lightroom Classic 14.2 and needs a little bit more information on it. And until next time, I'm MD Welch wishing you all the best from this very digital version of Photo Kitchen.